markets in an uproar. Reddit mafia is rocking Wall Street. What does this uh, short squeeze mean for silver and gold? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Quite a wild week in the markets, huh? Battered stocks, obscure companies, they got rocketed into the stratosphere from a cadre of Reddit activists determined to shock the world. Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, Tootsie Roll, <laughs> and of course, the poster child, GameStop. Maybe you saw what happened with First Majestic Silver, one of the mining companies I currently hold. Silver and gold markets are some of the most manipulated and shorted markets on earth. In this video, I'm going to talk with Dr. Quentin Henney. He's an economic geologist and a director with New Found Gold. He's got 25 years of exploration experience, mainly gold related. And he's led exploration teams for several well-known mining companies like Homestake Mining, Newcrest Mining, Newmont Mining. Okay, those are, those are big names, folks. He's also the founder, chairman, and president of Novo Resources. And he's taken a lead role in many high-profile discoveries. I'm going to ask the doctor his opinion on what effect all this Reddit rowdiness could have on the price of silver in gold. What more government deficit spending and even a possible Green New Deal could have on precious metals. And of course, I'm going to ask him how all this could translate into some nice profits for his company and shareholders. Welcome, Dr. Henny. Thank you so much for joining Yankee Stacking. Pleasure to be here. You know, I have to ask you about your take on what's happening in the markets right now, especially this past week it's been insane we've seen tremendous you know concentrated short attacks coming primarily from that subreddit wall street bets what do you make yeah. of all that <laughs> i think we're in a new paradigm <laughs> uh to put it blunt i don't think uh anybody anticipated anything like this and it, it truly is a paradigm shift i mean you're going to mm. look at uh, a lot of fed hedge funds and stuff completely changing their rule books um because they cannot tolerate you know obviously the exposure they had this week you know it could be be uh devastating for a lot of them it's a free market so i just hope that where this heads you know this is chaotic but i hope where it heads is a good place because i get worried that when things like this happen it's an opportunity for you know who to stick their nose in and regulate yes. us more yeah. I think that's coming, actually. We're already seeing, you know, trading restrictions, threats of regulation. Yep. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this makes it to Capitol Hill. Can't you see them talking about this? Well, I've seen, I've already seen on the internet letters, you know, posted mm -hmm. in both directions from Congress members talking about why, you know, they should not tolerate this uh, control by Robin Hood and so forth. And then on the opposite side, obviously, about imposing new regulations. So it's yeah. going to be a big tug of war for a while. I agree. It's just amazing, though. You see these, you know, armchair warriors, just like this small little group making such incredible difference, crazy valuations, just crushing these, you know, uh, uh, the big boys for massive short positions. They, they just feel empowered, right? <laughs> they do. It's going to be a brave new world. You know, I, I'm always a champion of the small guy, so yeah. you know, I tend to lean in that direction. Uh, but I just hope that, uh, like I said, that, you know, a lot of people don't get, don't get burned by this because, you know, they start whipping out new regulations. It's not going to be no. in the favor of, of the little guy. I can tell you that. Well, I hear you when you say get burned. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking back. You and I probably remember this it, back in 1999. It was partyon.com. You remember that? Yep. And they, very well. And they hammered the shorts back then, too. That's true. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not to bring it up, absolutely. Yep. And where mm -hmm. my mind went is actually back to nineteen, late nineteen seventy, seventy nine, early eighty, when you know mm -hmm. the Hunt brothers kind of, you know, supposedly cornered the silver market. However, you want to right. frame it, but you know that's effectively what happened is an extreme short squeeze. Silver went flying up. It you know it hit fifty two, I think, at that time. 
which in 1979 was a lot of money, That's man. a lot, yeah. I got people, you know, in the stacking community. I got friends, family. Shoot, I have my, my daughter's boyfriend texting me saying, you know, Yankee, should I jump in, you know? Uh, you <laughs> jump know, into what? Well, AMC <laughs> is something that was came up. You know, <laughs> whatever they're targeting. Shoot, yeah. I, I saw a stock. Um, the ticker symbol's AAGH. It went parabolic. For no reason a- other than it sounded like, ah, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I think it's like this. I think it's a medical company, whatever. It just boom, right up. That's high that's risk. A product of easy money. There's too much easy money sloshing around the system right now. I'm glad you said that because I want to switch gears a little bit. If we get a version of a, a, a so-called Green New Deal passed by our U.S. Congress, President Biden, I'm sure, is going to sign it. It could cost anywhere between 10 and $90 trillion. That's with a T. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, the little guy is going to feel the, the biggest squeeze because mm. a Big Mac, which costs five ninety five now, is going to cost nineteen ninety five in three or four years after this is you know in, implemented. So if people don't understand that, the entire nation needs to go through a serious downturn so that people understand it because this is not how you run things this is a a bad 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 choice but it's also changing a mindset i think in our country my parents generation did not expect government handouts which we euphemistically called stimulus they didn't they 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 planned for a rainy day they saved their money right correct now we expect it we we think that when hard times come it's no longer novel for the federal government to just send direct payments to us. We've been conditioned to it. And it comes with an automatic consequences, leads to distortions like you're seeing this week. This is a direct product of too much easy money. When did people get their stimulus check? What, about three or four weeks ago? What are we seeing as a product of it? <laughs> people doing crazy stuff like getting on you know, these platforms, Robin Hood and whatnot, mm-hmm. and trading mm-hmm. stocks like, like their video games. It's crazy. Well put. I, I think it's economic moral hazard in spades. Correct. One last thing, Dr. Two. The gold price and the price of top-tier mining stocks tend to follow that money supply. Yes, they do. Okay. They do. And it, it's a hockey stick. Um, I think that that is very bullish for mining stocks in general. Would you agree? I fully agree. You know, because of the stimulus, because of this really what is a deliberate uh, means of propping the economy up with a lot of easy money, mm. uh, it will come into the gold space. Everybody's sitting here wondering, why isn't gold up? Why isn't gold up? Exactly. You know what? Wait a little while, okay? I think this is a great buying opportunity. Obviously, you're, you're talking to someone in the silver and gold stacking community. We love to stack the physical, the tangible. Do you stack gold? Uh, I I stack a different kind of gold. I'll, I'll, let me see if I can find uh, Look, you know what? I have a nice piece right here. I stack the natural stuff. So if you look at this piece, Ooh. I'll try to turn it in the light. You can see a lot of nice frosty gold right at to- across the top of this thing. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Those are all big chunks of gold. And this is exactly the type of gold that we have in our deposit at Newfound Gold. You're stacking a whole different way, but I love it. (laughs) Okay, guys, we're going to start talking about newfound gold. Before I do, those of you watching this video, remember, this is a highly speculative investment. We're talking about a micro cap, a penny stock here. It's very volatile. I mean, if everything goes really well with newfound gold, if the, you know, the price of gold and silver rise, there's some serious profits that could be made, but there's always a, a risk of capital loss. So I always say, do your homework. And Dr. My homework is based on what I call the Yankee Quadrant. That's four factors that I like to consider uh, when I'm looking to invest in a mining company. Namely, management, projects, ownership, and financials. Very much in line with how I see these companies. Well, I already talked about your credentials in the uh, video's intro, but would you tell me what drew you to Newfound Gold and specifically to the team that you work with? Yeah, sure thing. Look, uh, it's actually a very interesting story. And, you know, if you've got a couple of minutes, I'll, I'll kind of give you the background. So sure. 
Uh, I, I run company a company in Australia, Noble Resources, mm. and we are actually heading into production. So in on that side, I've got a company that will be producing gold bars here very shortly. But as part of my, uh, we'll call it uh, skill set, I do review projects for other people now and again. And Eric Sprott, who's a well-known mining investor mm. uh, back in 2016, he knew I was down in Australia. He called me up one day and asked if I could go visit the Fosterville mine. The Fosterville mine is in Victoria. So I flew over to Melbourne, drew, drew, drove up to Victoria, up to, uh, sorry, to the Fosterville mine in Victoria. Mm. And I, uh, I had a look. Now, Eric was interested in taking an investment in them. This is early 2016 yep. because they had just started hitting some very high grades. This mine, which had a history of low grade pr pr production, you know, like four or five gram per ton kind of grade, uh, suddenly found this very high grade mineralization. And I was very fortunate to actually see this stuff close up, you know, right as they were making this discovery. And what I determined was that this system happened to be at a really critical level within the crust where these things form. Okay. And there's a, a sweet spot about two or three kilometers down when these things are forming where you can form just ungodly amounts of gold mm -hmm. in a very small space. And when I saw the mine, I was convinced that basically Fosterville was going to be one of these very, very special, unique types of deposits. So uh, Eric, you know, based on that recommendation, Eric took a large stake in them. Kirkland, who I then advised afterwards, uh, also took, you know, over the operation. They bought out New Market. Mm -hmm. And it was a wild success. Uh, fast forward about a year ago, I was uh, reviewing a project in Nevada, and and the fellow, the one of the fellows I was with, he, he said, "You know something about uh, about uh, Fosterville, don't you?" He said, "I said, yeah, yeah, you know, help with that." And then he said, "Well, take a look at some of these photographs from this drill core from mm -hmm. another project. It's in a private company." So I had a look at these photos. And I thought, how did you get pictures of Fosterville <laughs> for? <laughs> <laughs> I was just blown away. I mean, it was identical. And wow. I, I'm like, God, he said, no, no, this is a different project. It's in Newfoundland. We we literally got on the, the plane, you know, a couple of days later, flew up to Newfoundland. And I had the delight to see this thing, you know, up and up and close. So I got to see this core that was literally fresh out of the ground. Wow. Phenomenal hit. It turned out to be 19 meters of 93 grams per ton. To put it in perspective, that's yeah. 19 meters of three ounces. So see those uh, eagles that you have in front of you. There's sure. basically three of those in every ton of rock in this deposit, which for a gold deposit that's is amazing. Obscene. That <laughs> is incredible. My <laughs> word. It is. it is. So based on that, and then I met their team and uh, got to know what the, you know the the guys, what their plans were. Mm -hmm. And then they said they wanted to go public. I said, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. I think the management between Colin, who's really an up and coming, uh, we'll call it, the, you know, he's an entrepreneur through and through, but he's he's truly going to be like the next generation of Eric Sprott type, we'll call it, okay? And then Craig Roberts, the CEO. I've known Craig for, uh, I don't know, 13 years or something mm -hmm. like that. He, he actually helped me finance my first company when i left the major miners back in 2007 okay. okay so i've known craig for eons uh and then greg matheson the guy that's running the exploration program sharp mm -hmm. young kid uh doing a fantastic job he's built a team that's just second to none it's doing fantastic let's uh let's get into the meat and potatoes about uh newfound gold especially these uh, locations uh, up in um uh, newfoundland the queensway project i think you were touching on that uh, earlier, right? Um, yeah. The the I think there's two districts, right? There's a north and a south district, right? So okay. there's a, a major uh, structural zone, the Appleton Fault, that, that trends kind of north northeast. Is that the Would Dog have... Bay line that I read Correct. about? Correct. Dog. Yes, okay. The cool. super, yeah. Think of that as the the major structural zone, or okay. you know, zone that's been glued together. Okay, and, and that's where all these fluids that come from deep in the ground and mm. carry lots and lots of gold get focused. And then they come up and they find, you know, obviously the path of least resistance, right? They find uh, the little structural zones where you get two faults crossing. Boom, they take off up those 
those areas and they form these exceptionally high grade deposits as they approach the surface. Right. And they have about 110 kilometers of strike along that structure. Mm. Now there's a bit of a lake that kind of transects the property about mm. a third of the way down. Therefore, you know, just naturally it's kind of subdivided into two parts, the northern yep. part and then the southern part. And the northern part is where they're focused at the moment, but it's not to say in any way, shape, or form that there isn't very, very good potential in the southern part, too. Okay. It's just a, simply a function of where we've started our work. It's near the town of Gander. Mm. Gander is, I believe, around 20, 25,000 people, something like that. They have an airport. You know, obviously, with COVID, you know, travel is a little True. tougher these days. But you're, you're talking about a, a town or a small city that has infrastructure, a lot of support, a lot of contractors mm -hmm. like drill contractors and essential uh services needed by the mining industry right. so we have the right people we got uh you know drills on site from lo local drill companies and they perform great you know and the costs are actually quite reasonable so yes the the infrastructure is there and this is a uh, an absolute delight it's kind of mind-boggling to think of making such a high-grade discovery these days literally right in you know a, a well-developed area like this so we're going to have eight drills turning or we we are ramping up to eight drills wow and yes this is basically uh, uh all in i mean this, this when you see results <laughs> like this they're fully justified yeah. spending money and getting as much data and as, as many answers back as fast as possible wow absolutely critical for a company like this so um right after a really quick break we're going to talk to dr henny about the latest discovery at the appleton fault you're not going to want to miss it so don't go anywhere all right, we're back with Dr. Quinton Henney of Newfound Gold. So, doctor, can you tell us what was found at the Appleton Fault? I think it was just a couple of weeks ago, maybe two, three weeks ago. Okay, the Appleton Fault is one of the bigger structures within this corridor. Okay, mm -hmm. so think of, you know, there's different tiers. Let's think, I'll break it down. So you got the, the main structural suture. Yep. right which basically goes up the axis of the property mm -hmm. and then within that there's discrete fault lines these are major structures that go down on the ground quite some ways right. off of those major structures there's little tiny areas you know, we'll say relatively small structures that come shooting off we call them splays or secondary faults okay and and it's where those intersections are usually like i said we're the gold bearing fluids, they work their way up and, and that's where they deposit their goods. Okay. Mm. So what we're finding is this thing has a number of very high grade uh, gold deposits strung out along it, like almost like a daisy chain mm -hmm. or, you know, a line of Christmas lights or something. So think of it that way. All right. So the first one we discovered Keatstone, that's where that 19 meters and 93 grams was fantastic discovery. And now we're stepping out both to the North and South from there. And mm. we're seeing, the strike grow very quickly. So uh, we're very excited about that. That one looks like a, a home run, but it gets better. Mm -hmm. We then announced just recently yet another discovery. Uh, this is again, drilling a core in the ground and seeing lots of visible gold in the core. Mm. Very exciting stuff. Uh, and that discovery is about, I think about two and a half kilometers north of the Keats zone. So now we have at least like three wow. uh, bona fide discoveries. And this is early on, man. I mean, it, when, you know, I'd love to say that geologists are the smartest people on the planet. But here's the, here's the fact. When you start hitting gold like that, it speaks to the geology, okay? Yeah. When, you know, basically there's a lot of gold in the ground, mm -hmm. and even geologists can uh, get out there, swing a drill around, and find it on a routine basis. That's a good sign. You know, most of the intercepts we've announced so far mm. are in the, you know, say, ounce per ton or greater range. Uh, when you mm -hmm. see numbers like this, to put it in perspective, mm -hmm. okay, there's two things to take away. One is very high grade. Mm. Second is most of these drill holes are short. This is the beginning of the, the exploration program. We're drilling up in the near surface environment. So what does that mean? You got high grade that's likely going to be in an open pit. Does it mean it won't continue to depth? Heck no. It's going to continue down in the ground because these fluids came up from, from the bowels of the earth. So, you, you know, ultimately like 20 years from now, mm. people will be standing here going, wow, that was one of the biggest gold finds in Canada in history. Wow. I want to move into the, um, you know, the insider ownership. Who, who's got, a, uh, you know, the, the skin in the game? Uh, my company, Novo, the one I mentioned earlier, right, right. actually did a share swap with Newfound in March of last year. Right. We took a 15 million share stake in Newfound. I think we, the price was around a dollar, we'll say. And, yep. you know, obviously it's done us very well here. You also have Eric Sprott. Yep. 
And Rob McEwen, too. I believe he's around seven or eight percent. You know, Rob and Eric are are you know <laughs> the, the, like the yeah they, they are the gold experts. You know, on planet Earth here, man. They're that's how they made their name investing in companies like this. So they're big shareholders. I think of them as like uh, you know uh, the Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk's of the mining world. That's, Absolutely. So yeah. that's and the Palisade, obviously. I mean, Palisade yeah. is the big. They're the the guys you know, Colin included, who started the company. So look, uh, if you just add those numbers up, yeah, I think huge. over seventy percent of this stock is held by four parties, man. I mean, it is that's about as tight huge. as a drum. Very tight. Not a lot in the float. Well, is there any room for us thing. retail investors to get in on this? <laughs> let's, let's put it this way: nobody's going to short this like GameStop. <laughs> that is so uh, true. Look, yes, there is room for for retail shareholders to come in. I mean, the share yeah. price is a respectable it's yeah. about three fifty, three sixty, something like that right now. Yeah, um, it but it's it's worth it, man. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. in my view, this deposit will deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we will see one of the biggest. Uh, discoveries pan out over the next say 18 to 24 months mm. as we, we drill those 200,000 meters you know people will, will recognize this is a monster it's high grade it's the exact kind of deposit that major miner companies are going to want okay mm. why do you invest in gold explorers like this mm. look you know there are a lot of gold explorers that do make it to production i'm you know i'm fortunate because i'm part of one story but it's right. It's more exceptional than than you know than not. So, okay, here's the fact: exploration is geared toward discovery. What do you want to find? You want to find something that major mining companies are gonna want to buy. Okay, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when when gold prices go up here, as we all know, mm -hmm. these mining companies they're out there hungry. They need to bring in yes. these. New discoveries and and things like this are going to go at a, an obscene premium in the not too distant future. They have a very healthy balance sheet. I'm not exactly sure. Somebody asked me earlier today how much cash they have. I haven't had the chance to follow up, but I, I know it's well north of 20 million. So they got plenty of money to undertake this the the drill program they've announced. Mm. They also have obviously equities and stuff too. So I think the total balance sheet, believe it or not, is somewhere in the order of 50 million, something like that. Company's in a very good position uh, mm -hmm. to do this exploration work, keep its head down, and mm -hmm. drill the holes and make exciting discovery like we've been seeing the last few months. And th this is really cool, guys. If you follow Juniors at all, uh, Newfound Gold joined the GDXJ. That's correct. Yes, uh, the Vanek Fund GDXJ took a, a meaningful stake, a large stake, and I can't remember exactly when it was, like late November, early December, somewhere in that window. Right, right. But yes, uh, that that's a testament to the importance of this discovery. It's recognized by the major funds. Yeah, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's like the who's who of the world's most important uh, junior mining company. So really, that that's quite Correct. an honor. That's awesome. Yep. If you want the most exciting gold story going into one of the best gold bulls in history, this is the company. Ticker symbol is NFG, an over-the-counter stock, uh, NFG FF. How can people get in touch with you if they have more questions? Yeah, look, uh, the best way to do it is through our investor website, newfoundgold.ca. Mm -hmm. That is the, there, there will be a link in there that allows you to uh, get in contact with the company who will put you in touch with me directly. Uh, we have a wonderful IR team. They're very quick to respond. I'm I'm also quick to respond. So any questions you guys have, always happy to answer. Well, Dr. Quinton Henney, thank you so much for spending the time with us. Thank you. Pleasure. Remember, my friends, this is a leveraged investment. What does that mean? Well, that means with every move up or down in the price of silver and gold, the stock can have really uh, wild swings. Maybe not as much as, oh, I don't know, some Reddit crowd uh, attacking a stock, but you get the point. Do your own due diligence. Check them out. Put them on your watch list. I'll include uh, all the information on Newfound Gold right down there in the description of the video. And, uh, you know, leave a comment. Don't forget to like this video as well. And as always, I hope your day is a-okay.